Hello and welcome to another episode of Sandy Killer Projects. Um, as you could see, the 1953 uh, has been completely disassembled down to the frame. Uh, my plan for this video today was going to be to disassemble all the parts off of the frame, uh, plate uh, inside the frame channels, and then um, install uh, the new front end and rear end assemblies uh, to make it back to a rolling chassis. Unfortunately, um, the parts for the front end and rear end have been delayed. Uh, the front end is looking like it's going to be a couple of months. Um, it's just the world we live in now, so unfortunately, um, parts are behind. Um, but, uh, as you can see on the floor over there, I have the material all ready to go to do the plating. We just uh, don't have the parts to do it. So. For this video, I'm going to go through the disassembly of the front end, taking the uh, front solid axle and leaf spring assembly apart, uh, removing the transmission and the old undercab uh, brake assembly, which is going to be moved up to the firewall. Um, the rear end assembly, which on this particular setup is a, a solid um, drive shaft connected to the rear axle assembly um, with the leaf springs. Um, I'm also going to remove a few other things, the shackle mounts and um, these uh, bracings across the back of the, the bed area. Um, once this is completely stripped down, um, we'll uh, be waiting on parts to show up and then we'll do another video with the plating and the um, front end and rear end uh, install uh, and then everything will go to powder coating so um, let's get started all right to start uh, we're gonna just go from the front to the back so I'm gonna remove the solid axle assembly I've already started by uh, disassembling the uh, front brakes those took a 10 millimeter on one side and a 5 8 on the other and then I just drove the keeper out with a screwdriver and pushed the uh, line back through the frame uh, then, in the interest of time, because these are rusted and uh, junk shocks anyway, um, I cut the keeper off of the shock, um, and then um, I've disassembled the front shackle um, on the uh, front leaf string on both sides. So as you can see, after cutting through um, either side of the pin, I was able to get the front end to drop to the ground. I want to go over something before um, I go too much further into this because uh, it becomes really confusing if uh, you're trying to reassemble this thing um, and you just started messing with your geometry and don't know where things at. Um, so when before I started uh, doing this project, after I got the frame into the garage, I made this doodle. Uh, this seems really stupid, um, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, it's just a rough drawing of what the frame looks like um, and then it has measurements where the front axle centers line up and where the rear axle center is. It gives me all of my widths uh, across so I know uh, where the geometry of everything is supposed to sit. Um, luckily all of my measurements ended up uh, exactly the same on each side which is a good indicator that my frame is straight which is part of the reason why uh, we bought this car because it's uh, it's a straight frame. Um, so once that's done um, uh, and I've dropped the front end, um, this pin right here uh, takes the back off. There's a zerk fitting on it, um, which the zerk in or the grease in it is basically hard because it's been in there for so long and nobody's greased it. Um, then you take the nut off. You shouldn't need to back up the other side because uh, they should be swedge fit so that it um, uh, locks it into place. Uh, if it does turn, everything on it is a 15 16 My 15 16 is at work, so adjustable wrench it was. So I took both sides off, I'll drive the pins out, and then the entire front axle assembly will be on the ground. Right, there you can see the front axle assembly's out, and it's away from the vehicle. Uh, the one thing I do want to point out, which I did not know, um, the threaded bit of this actually goes into here threaded as, all, as well. So um, you're going to end up having to turn them out most of the way and then knock them out the rest of the way with 
a punch. Um, but as you can see, these bolts were in very, very bad shape. Um, these probably should have been changed. Leaf strings probably should have been changed a long time ago. But this car also hasn't been driving for the last 20 years. So I'm going to get the, uh, the front axle assembly out of the way. Uh, and then we'll drop transmission. All right, as you can see, somewhere along the way, um, somebody made a BS transmission cross member um, and welded it through to the original stock stuff. This is um, a three-speed manual transmission, which is what originally came in it. Why this setup was changed this way, I don't know. Maybe the original one broke, but as you can see, it got cut. Um, that whole original assembly, which ends right here, is going to end up getting taken out. Um, but for now, I'm going to cut through the BS mount and then I'm going to take the transmission up and out of here. So the point I'm at here, um, the transmission is out. Um, it's still sitting on that cross brace and there's a reason why. When I go to lift it out, it actually picks up the whole front end of the vehicle because uh, there's no more weight on the front end. So I've got to uh, drop the rear axle and then come back to moving the transmission because the transmission as, as where it sits is between the two um, mounts on this side. So when I drop the weight um, of the rear end, I'll then be able to pick this up out and finish cutting through the, the brackets that are put in there. All right, so to get the rear end assembly out, um, I had to move the jack that was underneath the transmission uh, underneath the third member of the rear end. Um, then, uh, as you can see from the back here, I have uh, cut the shackles. Um, like I said, same thing with the front. The the um, bolt for the mounts on both sides were these uh, pressed in pins, and uh, there, there isn't really an easy way to get them out. Um, I can unbolt the mounts for the leaf springs, which I will eventually, but at this point I'm just trying to get all the large components out. So I cut through either side of the pin, and I took the bolt that holds them in place out so that I could get it out of the way. I'll drop this on the ground, and then I've already taken the uh, shock bolts out, which were uh, 9 16 but I mean it depends on which shocks you have in yours. And then um, the front side of the leaf spring will come out with a bolt. It's exactly the same as the front, so I'm assuming that this uh, bolt will be threaded uh, through the mount. Um, and it has a zerk fitting on it just like the front side does if you're uh, running a stock front stock a stock front suspension. So uh, I'm going to take the rear end assembly out and then uh, from that point we'll be able to uh, pick the transmission up and move it out because the weight won't want to get tipped uh, towards the front. Okay so as you can see uh, everything's actually out. Uh, we removed the rear pins off of both the sides of the leaf springs and then uh, just shifted everything forward. The frame itself um, totals probably 400 pounds if I had to guess, maybe 500. Um, I could lift it cantilevering it off of the other jacks and we just moved it along. I also ended up, which I was planning on doing anyway, um, cutting out the BS mount between the um, uh, transmission here that they had built. Uh, then we lifted the transmission up and out and took it away and then I rolled the whole assembly out and through. If you look at it now, the entire frame is uh, stripped down looking. It's still not quite done yet. We have to get the uh, leaf spring shackles off of the front and the rear for the front leaf spring. I have to take the brake pedal assembly out. Um, I need to remove the rest of the transmission mount, the, the original existing. Um, the e-brake arm, which is this loop right here, is going to stay in place for now. I may end up taking it off uh, before uh, before we complete everything because uh, I need to be able to uh, get the frame completely cleaned down. Uh, then I have to take the mounts off still for the leaf spring in the um, front for the rear leaf spring and then the uh, rear mount for the rear and then these two straps are going to come off because the way the new uh, bed uh, rails are set up uh, this this ends up becoming useless and it's mostly there for the spare tire carrier that we're not going to have. I also have to take the brake lines that are fished in and along the side here that go all the way over to here out 
and then uh, we'll be ready to clean out the inside of the seed channel and primer it. Um, that's basically the point I'm trying to get it to, uh, but at this point it looks like it's done. There's still a lot more little things that need to be done. Okay, so as you can see at the back I took the um, bracings off for the uh, spare tire mount. Um, I've also taken one of the uh, mounts for the um, leaf springs, which you can see the other one's still there on the other side. Um, part of the reason why I'm showing you this is because <clears throat> this brace that's up here in the back, it's, uh, it's riveted through these back set of rivets. There's one hidden in the middle and another one on the other side. Um, the other one's much easier for me to take off because somebody uh, replaced it at some point and it's bolted on. Um, but there's, if you're changing your uh, rear end out um, and you're changing out the suspension for the rear end, all the shackles, including the front ones up there, are going to end up, shackle mounts are going to end up having to come out. This is going to get changed to a four link um, with a coil spring. So this is, all this stuff's got to come out. Um, I also have been in the process, my, my wife was actually out here giving me a hand. Um, she pulled the front leaf spring shackles um, out, and uh, as you can see, I started grinding this one off because um, they're riveted, so you got to grind through the rivets and then pound them out, and then it's also attached to these two, which I grounded, ground from the other side, so I didn't do as much frame, frame uh, damage as like I did on that side. Um, we also are in the process of taking out the brake mount because, as I had said, the this is going to get switched to a cab mounted, uh, not an under mounted uh, brake assembly. So um, from there, we're just going to keep going. I'm going to keep taking leaf spring mounts off and removing assemblies. Um, this will be the last major assembly to come off of it. Uh, the other thing that has to come off is the e-brake bar, um, but that um, will probably be one of the last things that comes out. Um, so we'll just keep chugging along. Okay, so I have most of the components off of the uh, passenger side uh, or the right side of the truck frame and I wanted to show a couple of things. This truck uh, was made with rivets. Now, most people when they think of rivets, they think of the old timey uh, guys on skyscrapers. That's exactly what these rivets are and these uh, rivets are not uh, easy to get off. As you can see, when I took the broken transmission bracket off, the rivets are still sticking through and on this uh, leaf spring attachment point um, I've ground them flush um, part of the reason was because the bracket was attached for the transmission cross member right here um, but as as you take them off you have to flush them off and then pry it out from the other side a lot of times these guys don't want to come completely out um, they're a lot of work they uh, they swell inside of the hole uh, from being impacted uh, with a hammer while they're glowing red hot. Um, so you usually have to grind the head off, pry off the material you want, and then you have to do a lot of work to clean up these guys and then get the other side to come off. Um, it's uh, this, this process is a bit arduous, um, but I'm going to keep going. We'll get all the parts that we don't need off of the uh, frame and I'm just going to keep going and we'll show progress as we need to. Alright, so we're getting close uh, to everything being off of the frame. As you can see, I got everything off the driver's side, passenger side, from the front. Um, I'm in the middle of removing the um, front leaf spring mounts uh, for the rear leaf springs. Um, the rear leaf spring mounts are all off, the cross braces are off. Um, but one thing I want to show before I move on too much, these, uh, these leaf spring mounts, they're held in with uh, the old style rivets as I was explaining before. Um, I've ground through the top of these, but they have so much pressure on them uh, onto the frame. Uh, what I'm doing is dimpling them with a half inch drill and then uh, hitting them out with a punch. That allows these to break loose, then I'll be able to hit the bottom of this and it'll it'll peel off. Uh, some of the other ones um, in the front are still in here. Oh, there's a good example of them right there. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, grind them flat and then punch them off. 
Uh, they'll come out easiest that way. Uh, also, the brake lines have been removed. Um, and I've got a couple little things like this bracket here that's got to come off and a couple other little minor things. So hopefully next we come back, this should be just about stripped all the way down. We're getting done uh, at this point with being uh, finished stripped. All the parts that needed to be stripped have been stripped off. All the rivets uh, that had been cut off had been uh, removed. And now I'm starting to prep the inside of the frame uh, for the fact that it's not going to get uh, powder coating on it because there's going to be plates over the outside. So uh, <clears throat> to do that, um, actually I should back up. There was a set of rivets that went through this brace right here um, on the back here and here. Uh, that held on the um, attachment for the uh, front leaf spring. When that came off, it actually took off these two supports here. So what I ended up doing was uh, running a bead across the bottom to make sure that it stayed in place because I'm not sure if there's hardware that's going to go back through here. Okay, so then uh, the areas where there's going to be plates, um, I'm prepping this metal. So this isn't quite done, but uh, we're stripping the rust off. And then once that's done, I'm in a red oxide primer, which is what's been done in the back. And then once that's done, I'll put a little uh, paint and primer uh, flat black on the inside because this whole frame is going to be uh, powder coated flat black. So once I get done with all this section, uh, then it'll get red oxide. And then this section back here when the paint dries, we'll get black on it. And then we'll do this all the way down through all the rails. Um, on both sides and then uh, we will be completed for this video because at this point I'm waiting on uh, parts and then I'll play it after that All right, so at this point we're done um, as you can see everything's been uh, Flat black painted paint job isn't pretty doesn't need to be it's just uh, for something underneath where the plates are eventually going to go uh, And the, as I had mentioned in the beginning plates are sitting right there um, the other thing that I wanted to show you uh, before I move on is it took me a little while to figure it out. I had to find uh, some GM diagrams, but uh, there was a bracket that was sitting on here that I had to remove. It was probably some sort of uh, reinforcement plate for uh, the steering box that somebody put in back in the day, but since we have the body off, there's no reason to do that, and we're going to put plates on the other side of this. So the plates on the other side will actually make up for this thing not being here. And I don't know uh, exactly how the front suspension is going to go in, and I don't really want any extra parts in the way, so uh, that had to be taken off. Uh, and as you can see, it's all cleaned off and looks like the way the frame's supposed to look. So, um, as I said, at this point, we're done. Um, the next video is going to have us doing the plating. Uh, I'm still waiting on the front end and rear end parts. Um, those will come in. We'll mock them up. Uh, we'll install the parts that have to be permanently put on for it. The frame goes out for powder coating. Um, and then uh, I'm not sure if powder coating will happen and then we'll install. Maybe that will be the next video. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. And we'll keep making more videos. Thanks.